Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm starting a new series where I'm building a gaming PC with my daughter. In this first video, I will actually be doing a case review and I'll be taking care of that by myself. But that'll only be the first part of the case review. The final video in this new series will be a final review of that case after we've populated it and I run some tests, including some severe heat tests. As I get started, I'll ask you right off the bat, please subscribe to my channel if you see anything here that's helpful or interesting. Thanks for watching. This case that you see right here was uh, selected by my daughter. In the next video, you will actually see the two of us working together, hopefully mostly her, putting this computer together. It's her new gaming computer which she's going to have for her new apartment. Anyway, first time it's being opened, honestly, Scout's Honor. Obviously I did read about it online, so I generally know what it, what it is and what other people have said about it. However, I myself have not spent any time looking at it. Well, right off the bat, it has a pretty decent tempered glass side panel, although it's not one that swings out. At least I don't think so. Let me take off of these finger nuts see what we got. No, no swing out on this thing. Okay. I will not take the plastic off of the tempered glass. That'll be up to her once the computer is fully built. A little bit tinted, a little bit of tint on it, but not bad at all. So I'll put this on the side over here so it doesn't break. Okay, instruction. Well, a rather small set of instructions, actually. One page. I was actually trying to find online the instructions for this case, but I really couldn't find any. They actually show how it all comes apart. They give the specs on it. They label all the components to it. It comes with four fans. These four fans are supposed to be full RGB. We will find that out exactly how quality they are once we booted it up. But the first thing I want to see is it's already got all of the uh, studs in for full ATX, which I believe that's what my daughter's motherboard is. We'll look at those parts in the next video. What do we got here? They gave us a couple of these, actually only one of these, right? A plastic one too, it's not even metal, to replace the I.O. card block. Actually, one is already removed where you would normally put the video Video card I guess but it'll, I'll have to pull out another one obviously because of the video card that she has to give you one of these plastic things to fill it back in if you want these unfortunately and I had seen that online once you twist these off um, they will not go back so these particular IO slot shields once you rotate them back and forth and pull them out that's it they're gone let me see what we got here. Let me put it down this way. So as we can see here, it already has all of the motherboard mounting studs installed. They're not black. That bothers other folks. It doesn't necessarily bother me. We have over here the front panel. Whoops. Oh, what has it got here? Oh, it's got a magnetic dust filter on the front. It came right off when I was moving the case. I put this aside for now. So we see the, uh, the I.O. front panel here. There's supposed to be color controls here as well. I wonder if it goes into the back of the case. It probably does. Buttons here in the front panel for the color controller. In addition to all the standard components, there's two USB 2.0s, one 3.1 reset switch, the standard stuff, the audio switches. Let me take the back panel off of this thing. Well, it looks like I got two of these in the back here that I have to pull off. Let's see what the back looks like. I got all of the wires here. Everything looks nice and black, so it's going to hide well in terms of making it a, a showcase for RGB. Why do they do this with the audio? It always boggles my mind. Why, does, why don't they make those wires black as well? And we have all the fans coming in here. Now, it's hard to tell. I wanted to see if these fans were four wire or three wire. I tend to doubt that they would put PWM with the cost of so this case. It's a relatively inexpensive course. I, case I think we paid a total of maybe 90 bucks for it so chances are USB 3.1 connector chances are it's not there's no grommets in it there's no actual grommets for the cable passing into the back side panel here it looks like an RGB slash fan combined it's a four wire almost like that's a four wire fan connector so we'll have to find out I doubt they're four wire the RGB is carried along the same one. The chances are it's reusing some of those in order to do both the RGB. So all of the I.O. connectors are that way. You have to remove this little panel here in order to pull out any of the cards. So this thing here would have to be removed. It's 
rather low quality type construction. He took a regular screw head and just encased the head in the plastic sleeve. Uh, and there's one here too as well that uh, locks this panel in here that is used to lock in the I.O. It's supposed to be able to handle uh, support uh, while the water cooling. Looks like we could put a 240, maybe even a 280 up in the top here. So that's a possible water cooling option. And it has three fans blowing in from the front across the entire motherboard and what looks like a couple of hard drive, probably the two and a half inch meant for SSD hard drive devices. It does have a uh, filter down on the bottom here. So this little filter, it's accessible only though from the back of the case, which makes it difficult. But at least it slides out. It's not magnetic shield, which you'd have to actually take the thing and part, at least partially flip it upside down to get to it. What is all this stuff? That is strange. It has a whole package of wires here that look like you got LEDs, reset and power. You got the power switch. But it looks like that stuff is installed and we already have other wires for it. Let me see, let me make sure that we have everything here. Yeah, they're all here already. Everything is here, but it looks like they also give you another set of them. That's unusual, where would that go? Hmm, I wonder if they just accidentally left this in. It's unusual for them to give you spares on this. Is it even spares? Because there's an actual circuit board up underneath here that is doing the other stuff for you. You'd have to pull that out, which I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna go ahead and pull that out right now to see whether or not those switches would fit in there. Okay, well I guess it looks like it might, at least in terms of the lights. So they give you a spare set of LEDs and switches for the front panel. I never saw that before, okay. I'm a little concerned about the intake of the air. That's on the side here, it's a relatively small and there's no filter really on it. I don't like these really in between grade air intakes because it's going to suck dust in there. It's going to sort of uh, make it difficult to have my positive airflow that is clean, which is why I mainly do it, is so I have clean air going into the case. It's kind of hard to control that. In this case, it's not something that I can easily see. With all these little grates to it as well, it's going to even be difficult to vacuum, quite honestly. Um, it's got a, a shroud for power supply. Why they would open up the side of the shroud, I mean, only certain power supplies would have RGB that you could see on the side. Most of them are on the top or elsewhere. So, power supply we have for her build, I do not believe <laughs> has any L uh, LED RGB on the side. So that's going to be wasted. It'll probably show the brand name of the power supply through there. Quality of the metal seems pretty nice. It seems to be a nice 18 gauge metal, but without the uh, grommets, it's not going to hide the cables as well going into the back here. It does have some, a lot of cable tie downs, which is a big plus. So we can use those in when we're trying to um, manage all of these cables, plus the other cables that the various I.O. devices might have. So other than that, we will see. Um, I guess my biggest concerns is I'm not sure about the fans. I'll have to decide later whether they're PWM or not. I don't think so. I couldn't find anything online about that either. And the RGB is only in the frame of the fans. It isn't in the uh, blades or across the blades even. Unusual blade configuration on those fans too. Looks like the two-part construction. Can you see here what I mean by two-part construction? It actually looks like two parts that are snapped together right here. Two parts snapped together to make up each of the flam. They actually looks like it rotates a little bit. No, it doesn't. They have them glued together or, or snapped together. It's hard to tell from this angle. Um, what I didn't do is I didn't take off the front glass, tempered glass on the front. Let me take that off. See, I'll probably have to leave that off anyway when we do the build. These are the ones that were on the side, much shorter than the ones that were on the front panel in terms of the size of the screw. Same type of thread though, but the front ones are longer. I'll have to remember that when we put that back on. And then this part here should come off, right? They've got the plastic coating on the front. Of it. I will leave that off for now. It's got both sides. No, it doesn't. It's only got the outer one. It doesn't have the inner one. So I'll have to be careful with fingerprints on that. My daughter may not appreciate that if I get it all fingerprinted up. And then we have the three fans 
probably have a lot better cooling. It'll probably be much cooler without that front glass on, but then we'd have to put some sort of filter on here, which we can get. We can get those and add them later if we wanted to. I guess that's it. Uh, it is what you pay for it, right? This case uh, costs about 80 bucks, and it seems to be worth that, hopefully. At least all of the connectors and such for the wiring, front panel and USB connectors, at least they're all nice and black. With the exception of the, uh, one is probably the sound and one is probably the USB 2.0. It's going to be an interesting thing to get this uh, RGB working. It looks like it can support more fans. There's an extra connector here, a splitter on that one. So uh, where's the main one that goes to the motherboard on that? Though? I suspect it doesn't even go to the motherboard. We're, we got a Molex connector here. There's a Molex connector here that looks like it's supplying all the power to the, flame, the fans and their RGB. These are going to be running all the time. I don't see a fan controller in here at all. That's a little disappointing. Controller panel, I do not believe, has a speed controller on it. Now, chances are that's just for the LED itself. Change the colors and the pattern. That's what it looks like to me. Unless it's buried around here and I don't see it. Those things can be very small, so it's hard to tell. We will have to find out when we find out when we put it all together. Anyway, that's the case review on the Moostex Moose or Mustex, I'm not sure, Model 903 gaming computer case. I'll see you in the next video as we put something in here with my daughter. Thank you. Okay, that completes the case review. In the next video, me and my daughter will be putting the components into that gaming PC. And we'll see how that turns out. So please tune in for that. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And again, click on the little head here and subscribe to my channel. It will be very helpful. Thanks.